magnify the name of the Lord for what God has been doing even since the beginning of the program. I want you to worship him. I want you to give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the praise. Magnify him because he saves. He is the reason for this season. Magnify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Ancient of days, we bless you, O Lord, this hour. We want to thank you for your faithfulness and for your goodness. We want to thank you, O Lord, for how you have been feeding us since we started the program on Thursday. Thank you, O Lord, for the visitation. Thank you, O Lord, for the power. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Father, for the encouragement that we have been receiving from all our ministers and most especially for, from our Father in the Lord. Thank you, Almighty God, because you have a plan for us, a purpose for us, and it's for every one of us to make it to heaven. We pray, Holy Spirit divine, that you will guide us throughout our journey in the name of Jesus. At this period of the Bible study, we pray that you come and speak to us. King of glory, open the pages of the scripture to us. Those things that we are yet to know and those things that we have forgotten, remind us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church of God says, Amen. The second Bible study is taken from the book of Exodus. So wherever you are, in your homes, in the church, open your Bible with me, please, to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 31 to 51. We're going to take time to read this passage because the passage is loaded. And the Lord wants you to get a lot of things from this passage. And that is why I want us to take some time to look at each of the verse so that God will be able to speak clearer to us. And by the grace of God, you will not miss your blessing this afternoon in Jesus' name. So follow me as I read verse 31, Exodus 12, 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your hands as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent, very urgent, urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was living. Their knitting through, being bound up in their clothes, upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. According to the word of Moses. Take note of that. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor. God gave the people favor. Take note of that. In the sight of the Egyptians. So that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Soko, about 600,000 on food that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude, take note of that, mixed multitude went up also with them. And flocks and had even very much cattle. And they baked on living cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not living, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now, the sojourning of the children of Israel, who dwelt in Egypt, was 430 years. Take note of that. And it came to pass, at the end of 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. 
This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. And a foreigner and a an hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall he be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh, abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Our Bible study of yesterday focused on God's plan of redemption for the Israelite, for the Israelite from Egypt. The 13 verses show us the preparation to deliver them from Egyptian bondage. In between verse 13 to verse 31 that we are looking at, we see the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians and the prescription given to the Israelites to avoid the death of their firstborn. If you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 23, Exodus 12, 23, it said, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seared the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, will not allow, will not permit the destroyer to come into your house to smite you. The passage before us, brethren, is the description of the release and the actual exodus of the, East, of the children of Israel from Egypt. This is a critical turning point in the book of Exodus. And of course, the Old Testament as a whole. Why do we say this? If this Exodus 12 did not take place, the future of Israel depends on this moment. The rest of the Old Testament will not have taken place. And the Israelites will not have any major history to talk about. The role of these 21 verses that we just read is, number one, just to describe the departure from Egypt and deliverance from the bondage of the Israelites. If you look at verse 31, and he called for Moses. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among you. Look at the same passage, verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Soko, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Not only that, this passage is to establish the annual celebration of Passover, to give them regulation and guidance as to how to operate this Passover. We are going to see much of it as we go, go on in the teaching of these Bible studies. Brethren, our God is all-knowing God. He knows the beginning from the end. He told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, around verse 13, he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. 
the time had now fully come that Israel would depart from Egypt as planned and promised by God. Though brethren Abraham had died, God still remained faithful to his word because he told us in that verse 41, it came to pass and it will come to pass all the promises of God in your life shall come to pass in Jesus name. Though the promise may seem delayed, God is never late concerning the fulfillment of his word. He will fulfill what he has said he is going to do. Pharaoh resisted Israel's departure vehemently. Egypt fought against it, but they could not prevail. Because Isaiah 43 verse 13 tells us, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk, and who shall let it? There is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord. There are many devices in my heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. If you don't have anything to take home, from this retreat, know that all the counsel of the Lord concerning your life, the promises of God concerning your life, it shall stand. Our GS have told us we are escaped from every works of darkness. Just hold on to, on to that. As believers, we should rest upon the unchanging promises an unchanging word of God. Though things may seem upside down, those things may not be working as it ought to work. Just tell yourself, things shall work better for me in Jesus' name. Just join that songwriter that says, standing on the promises, I cannot fall, and you will not fall. Listening every moment, to the spirit call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. When you stand upon the promises of God, you will not fail, you will not fall. Even though the calamities may be going on in the world, pestilences may be going on, when the word of God says you shall not die but live, just stand upon it, and the Lord will keep you true in Jesus' name. Three points before I finish this part. Number one, Israel released by Pharaoh. Point number two, Israel's long awaited deliverance. Point number three, God's instruction to liberated Israel. Israel released by Pharaoh, Israel's long awaited deliverance, God's instruction to liberated Israel. Israel. Point one, Israel released by Pharaoh. Before the beginning of the confrontation between Moses and Pharaoh, the winner has already been determined by God. What do I, why do I say that? Look at Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. The Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. If that is the only word that Moses had, it's even enough for Moses to sail him through the journey. And if that is the word that you can hold on to, that God said unto you, I have made thee a God to any Pharaoh in the world, you will sail through and I also will say true in Jesus' name. Why did I say that the winner of the battle has been determined? Look at Exodus chapter 5, verse 2. And look at this man called Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. This man did not know that God has important thing for the children of Israel. If he did not release them, 
we will not have the next chapter of the Bible, Leviticus, Numbers, and everything. The plan of God for you and I shall be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Look at verse chapter 8, Exodus chapter 8. I'm going to uh, look between this, between this Exodus chapter. We are going to see for ourselves what we need to understand. First of all, let us look at the, the profile of this man called Pharaoh. Because Israel released by Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a man that is very recalcitrant, very stubborn. Number one profile that I have here, Pharaoh was ignorant. Ignorant of the God of Israel. And that is why he told them, who is the Lord? I hope you will not be like him. You will not be ignorant of the power of God. You will not be ignorant of the possibility of God. You will not be ignorant of what God can do. Profile of Pharaoh, the man was disobedient. And that is why he said, I will not let Israel go. He was unbelieving. He did not believe God. Look at Exodus chapter 5, verse number 9. Let their, let their more work be laid upon this, this man, that they may labor therein and let them not regard. That is the instruction that he gave to them. And he began to do after them with a lot of things. What are the other profiles that I see in this life of Pharaoh? The man was foolish. You sorry to use that language, but there's nothing to sorry about because that is his nature. He was a hardened man. Though this man, I can say at a time, he was privileged. God gave him a lot of opportunity, but he misused the opportunity. This is the man that have the children of Israel in captivity. But at the end, what happened to him? The man was lost. Lost here or not, lost in eternity. You will not be like this man. But by the grace of God, you and I, that are going to heaven, we will be what God wants us to be in Jesus name we've seen his his profile we've seen his peril the last plague that everybody knows about was the breaking point for Pharaoh Pharaoh as I said recalcitrant hard-hearted king thought he can fight the redeem of the Lord brethren nobody can fight God and win I repeat, no human beings can fight God or his work and win. So if you are there and you are in the church and you are thinking that you can fight A, B, C just to hinder the work of the Lord, you better retreat and repent. He thought he can match the power of God. Little did he know that God had a lot of exit strategies. I call it exit strategies for his chosen people. That is why we have those various plagues. The exit strategy one, we see the plagues that were befalling upon the children of Israel. The plague of the blood, the plague of the frogs, the plague of the lies, the plague of the flies, the plague of the cattle, the plagues of the boils, the plagues of the hail, plagues of locusts, place of dark, darkness if somebody were like Pharaoh when all these plagues are coming that should give him a pointer, a signal that what is fighting the battle is fighting he cannot finish it so brethren don't start a battle you cannot win or a battle that you cannot end at the end, God, at the end, Pharaoh gave up. And that is why we read in Exodus 12, 31, he was in haste. He told Moses and he told Aaron, he called for them, rise up, get you forth 
from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go. What he did not want to do before, he began to be in haste. Just like a, an adage that says, they tell you to count, number, count from number one to three. You said, I cannot count one, two, three, four, five. He was supposed to let the children of Israel go at the beginning, but he refused. He refused. Let me assure you, brethren, as a chosen child of God, God has an exit plan for you, even in that problem. I don't know the challenges you are facing. No matter the problem, no matter the situation, you will not die in the hand of Pharaoh. You will not die in the challenges that Pharaoh is bringing across to you. Those challenges, by the grace of God, will soon expire. Our God is a loving God. He will always give a lot of chances for sinner. For adventure, you are listening to me. You are hearing my voice. You are like this man called Pharaoh. At times, he will, he will call Moses. Please call, tell your God, forgive me, I've sinned. And immediately, the plague is removed. Pharaoh will go back. You are telling God, well, let me just do commit this sin. I'm going to ask for forgiveness. Don't do that. God has given you a lot of opportunities and chances for you to repent. This is the right time for you to repent because nobody is guaranteed the next session or the next second. God loves you. He wants you to live holily. I want you to live righteously. From this passage, I want us to take note of about four important lessons that we can take home. Number one, number one lesson and encouragement for us as believers is that God will take our battles if we are faithful to him. God will take over our battle if we are faithful to him. No matter the battle you are facing, if you are faithful to him, you live the way you're supposed to live. And challenges of life come. Definitely, he will never leave you in that battle. Even in the midst of, this, of the storms, he will rise up for, on your behalf and will fight your battle. The only problem is, if you are not faithful to him, a lot of things can go wrong. Look at, remember Balaam and Balak. In the book of Numbers, we were told, he said, he had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He had as it were the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. I just wonder why so many people begin just to bind and lose. It's good to bind and lose. The battle that the Lord has won for you, you just need to go and rest and begin to praise the name of the Lord. At last, the promise made by the Almighty God to Abraham more than 400 years ago was fulfilled. The details of the promise were fulfilled literally. The experience of Abraham's seed in Egypt was precisely as God has said. Every word of God was made good because God is not a man that he should lie. Number two lesson I want you to take home this afternoon and the encouragement for us is that our knowledge of God, of how God was faithful in fulfilling his promises to Israel, should make our faith strong in the Lord. Everything he said concerning you and I shall surely come to pass. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Rise up, get you forth from my people, both ye and the children. Go serve the Lord as ye have said. This man has been humbled, humbled by God Almighty. The judgment of God came upon him. He said, 
take your flaws, take your heart, as you have said, be gone, leave my country. Brethren, you need to humble yourself. Humility is essential. Some people will pray, oh God, humble me, oh God, humble me. If you allow God to humble you, you will not like it. Go and ask Nebuchadnezzar, when he was humble, what happened to, what happened to him? You need to humble yourself. So another lesson for us is that pride is dis destructive. A man's pride shall bring him low. Pharaoh was so arrogant, so pride, God humbled him. Proverbs tells so, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, these six things that the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. A proud look. Earlier, Pharaoh had proposed a compromise with Moses to go and serve the Lord without the flocks and the herd. But Moses had refused. He refused any compromise. He told Pharaoh, everything that we have, we are going to take along with us. So what lesson can we learn from the statement of, of, of Moses? Don't negotiate with the devil. What did I say? Don't negotiate with the devil. Pharaoh wants him to negotiate. At times, probably the enemy might be calling you. You know that thing. You, you can, you can, you, you you can do it this way. When you begin to sit down with the devil on the same table, you know, give the devil an inch. Definitely, it's going to take a mile from you. So everything that you want to do, you put the devil where it belongs, and you begin to focus on what the Lord has given you to do. And you will do it faithfully to the end in Jesus' name. We are told the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might set them out of the land in haste. God had told the children of history to get ready to leave Egypt. He said, he told them, with your loins guarded, your shoes on, your feet, your staff, everything. Be in haste. At the point, Pharaoh saw the finger of God. God will continue to back us up in Jesus' name. I say God will continue to back us up in the name of Jesus. Point number two, Israel long awaited deliverance. Israel long awaited deliverance. Back to our text, Exodus chapter 12, from verse 37. Exodus 12, 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 600, on foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle, and they baked on living cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not living because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any vultures. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses. You know, before the journey, God gave them four things, instruction to do. Number one, he told them, have your loins guarded. You guard your loins, be prepared. Number two, their shoes on their feet. Number three, their staff in their hands. Number four, they are to eat in haste. So it is with us today as strangers and pilgrims in this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. We have a goal, and the goal for every believer is to make it to heaven. And because of that, we have a lot of instruction that the Lord has been given unto us. Look at part of this instruction in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, 
I read verse 1. He said, We are for sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. Lay aside every weight of sin because we are surrounded with so great cloud of witnesses. The cloud of witnesses are the one we saw in chapter 11 of Hebrews. Cloud of witness like Abel, like Enoch, like Noah, like Abraham, like Sarah, like Moses, Joseph. They are the people that are going to stand against you if you refuse to make it to heaven. Probably you might be, you might want to tell God, Oh Lord, it's because I don't have any, any children. That's why I cannot serve you with all my heart. God will now call Abraham. Abraham, come on. What happened to you in the world? Abraham will begin to tell you, I have the same problem you have, but this is how I, I did it. I focus on the Lord. I focus upon the promises, and God gave, it, God gave me the children that I have. Probably you want to say, oh, I'm in a strange land, and if I don't do the way they are doing it, in this country, I have to forge something before I can, before I can walk. He will now call Joseph. I said, Joseph, come. When you were sold to the land of Egypt, what happened to you? Joseph will tell you, well, when that woman wanted to commit immorality with me, this is how I did it. You have the Bible. Joseph did not have the Bible. Abraham did not have the Bible. The word of God that we have been hearing, we have been receiving, we stand against you. I pray it will not stand against you. And if you don't want it to stand against you, that is why you have to put aside, lay aside every weight of sin, weight of sin which so easily beset you because our journey to eternity, our journey to Canaan land of heaven, it may not be on bed of roses because the people that have gone before us, it wasn't easy for them. Don't think it's going to be so easy because if it's so easy, so cheap, you will not value it. I pray as you concentrate yourself, all these witnesses, they will not stand against you. Probably you may be telling me, say, Pastor, all these people are dead. Who are the witnesses that, can, that I can see before me? See all the ways our preacher has been preaching since Thursday, passionately. Look at that message yesterday concerning evangel. Our pastor, so no, it was it was as if he wants everybody just to go out there, the message, and go and be winning souls. Those are the witnesses that are going to stand before you against you. Look at our general superintendent, not tired, a man. The man is almost 80, still strong in the Lord. These are the witnesses that are going to stand against us. Look at all the messages you have been hearing. Look at all the Bibles you have in your home. You have it on your computer. These are the witnesses that are going to stand against you. So brethren, don't let us be like Pharaoh. Pharaoh saw the finger of God for almost 10 times. He refused to yield to the Lord. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. So if we want our journey to eternity to be easy, what are we going to do? Look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We know it of it, but let's see, go and remind ourselves those things that we know before. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 11. Let me back up to verse number 10. Say, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You want to make it to heaven, be strong in the Lord. How? In the power of his mind. You are on a journey to heaven. What do you need to do? Put on the whole armor of God. Like a pastor that prayed for us yesterday, he said the Marines, you know, they, all, they, are, they all, always guard themselves. They, all, they are always equipped. Put on the old armor of God. I don't
don't see a soldier on the battlefield without his gun by his side. Put, put it on every day that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because we are going, we are on a journey to heaven. For we wrestle not against flesh, we wrestle not against blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the old armor, not partial armor, of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins. Remember, loins. God told them about loins in the book of Exodus. He's telling us in the New Testament, your loins guard about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery deaths of the wicked. Take up, put it on, use it every time. The Lord will help you, the Lord will help me, that this journey to eternity, whatever be the time, whatever challenges, as you put on all this all, all, all this instrument, all this armor, you will make it to the end in Jesus' name. The second section I want us to see from Israel Long Awaited Deliverance, we were told in verse 38, the mixed multitudes, the mixed multitude went up also with them. The mixed multitude, they are troublemakers, when hardship and trouble came, they are going to be the first person to complain. Why the mixed multitude? Who are the mixed multitude? I said, they are mixed multitude because there are some Egyptian that married Jews maiden, or Hebrew married and Egyptian maiden. The offspring of such union, like this, when problem comes, in the land of Egypt, we'll be thinking, shall I go with these people or not? A variety of causes and reason might have prompted them to join and depart with Israel. Number one, some because of the miracles wrought by God on behalf of Israel. Number two, others because of their intermarriages with the Israelites. Three, others were afraid to remain in the land. Today, we have mixed multitude around us. These mixed multitudes were people who had no encounter with the God of Israel. They have no encounter with the God of Israel. This mixed multitude, they have no business with the God's call to his people. The mixed multitude I'm talking about they have no promise of Cana as their focus. You that have the promise of Cana, you have it as a focus, but in their own case, they have no promise of Cana as their focus. This mixed multitude, they have no law of God to guide their conscience. They, like our GS told us this morning, they are like Lot that make wrong decision to go to Sodom. And when they go to Sodom, what they encounter there is destruction. This mixed multitude, they have nowhere actually to go, but what they do is to follow. These are people who had no goal to pursue. They have no inheritance to claim, no covenant with Jehovah to keep. Had nothing to lose, brethren, because if they died in the wilderness, they are not going to lose anything. It is you and I that have a lot of things to lose if we don't comply with the standard of God. The mixed multitude today, 
in the church, they are not genuinely born again. They come to church because of miracles, others because they are looking for life partners, while others because of economic reason. Brethren, it is very dangerous for any Christian to associate with them. The mixed multitude we are talking about, they are in the church today and they cause commotion and confusion. If you are part of it, you just have to be careful. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I was told my time is up. Whatever you have heard, take it to the Lord in prayer and begin to tell the Lord, O oh Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Ancient of this, we bless you. We worship and magnify your holy name. Thank you for the little time we have used together in this book of Exodus. Lord, let this word continue to ring bell in our hearts, in our life, in the name of Jesus. As we continue, continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray.